So on the last video, we talked about the fact that energy in the ecosystem travels from, from organism to organism and that in the process of this, matter is also transferred through the ecosystem because it's matter that carries that energy. It's the chemical bonds inside the organic compounds, the sugar, for example, where the energy of the sun is trapped during photosynthesis or other kinds of uh, production mechanisms like chemosynthesis, whatever it is that the producer is doing. That energy is trapped in the sugar, and then when something eats that sugar or other chemical compounds, the energy goes with it, and breaking down those compounds releases that energy. So transferring energy in ecosystems is the same thing as transferring matter in a way. But remember that we talked about before that matter is recycled in ecosystems, but energy only flows through ecosystems. And the reason for that is because... Um, there needs to be a constant input of energy in ecosystems because as we talked about in the last video every time energy transfers take place some of the energy gets disorganized and becomes less useful and it's a concept that we talk about in entropy a good example of that uh, is for ex is when you produce the energy for example in a in a hydroelectric dam so you have the hydroelectric dam and then originally you have all this potential energy inside of the water that's in the reservoir behind the dam but then as the water goes through the propeller, uh, that energy becomes kinetic energy. But not all of the kinetic energy of the flowing water gets trapped by the propeller inside of the hydroelectric dam. And not all of the energy from the kinetic energy of the propeller actually becomes electricity. Some of it gets lost as uh, friction, as heat, as sound. right? And some of the energy that's produced in the electricity is also uh, transferred into heat by, by the time it actually gets to your house. And by the time it gets to your house and you turn on the stove, that energy is used to heat up the resistance that's going to heat up the pan that you're using to cook. But some of the energy that's heating up the resistance actually gets transferred into the air and lost as heat to the air. Some of it heats up the pan, not the water. And some of the energy that heats up the water doesn't heat up the actual food. Every step of the way, some of the energy gets transferred to less useful types of energy like friction, uh, sound, and heat, and these th like uh, heat and sound. And that means that the total amount of energy in the ecosystem will always stay the same, but they will become more disorganized over time. And that's a concept that we talk about in entropy. But when you talk about ecosystems, the source of energy is also very important. Now, 99% of the energy that is used up in natural ecosystems comes from the sun. The sun is the leader in Earth's energy budget. But remember what we talked about in terms of entropy. Not all of the energy that hits the Earth coming from the sun is actually transferred into the ecosystem. Out of the 100% of the energy that enters the sun, a lot of it is reflected back by the atmosphere or the clouds or, or by the Earth's surface. A lot of it is absorbed by the atmosphere or the clouds or the surface. A lot of it is conducted by the land in, back into the air and then back into space. And a lot of it is reflected off the oceans. A lot of it is uh, reflected off other surfaces. Only a very small fraction of that energy actually ends up hitting a plant or some other kind of photosynthetic organism like an algae or a cyanobacteria. And only a small fraction of the energy that actually hits the plant actually gets converted to chemical energy inside the bonds of a sugar. So as you can see, energy transfers are going to become uh, make sure that the entropy of the system is increasing because the energy is scattering all over the place. But the sun is not the only source of energy on the Earth systems. You can also get energy from the Earth itself. The fact that the Earth has a hot inner core powers a lot of the things which are going to influence the ecosystems of the Earth. Um, mountains and valleys and earthquakes and plate tectonics and volcanoes all of which are things which alter the abiotic factors of the ecosystem and therefore affect ecosystems are caused by earth's internal energy or the heat that is left over from the creation of the earth process or the radioactive decay that is occurring at the core of the earth or the actual gravity compression of the earth pulling inwards uh, because of gravity those three sources are generating heat that the Earth is constantly spilling over in the form of plate tectonics, earthquakes, deformations of the crust, and volcanoes. But that's only a small fraction of the energy that actually influences ecosystems. 
When we talk about ecosystem biology, the majority of it is going to be talking about the energy that's coming from the sun and entering the food web through uh, autotrophs that do photosynthesis. Okay? So that's it, and I, I hope that you understand where energy from the Earth comes from. Most of it comes from the sun, and a minority of it comes from uh, other parts, including the Earth's core. All right. On the next video, we're going to start talking about uh, how this energy is actually trapped into the ecosystem, and we'll talk about productivity.